The name's Rex. But you'll call me Captain or Sir. War does not come with a guarantee. No soldier gets the promise of safety. My designation is Trooper 27-5555, sir. We call him Fives. I'm Heavy. This is Echo. I'm Commander Cody, your new boss. Sir, yes, sir! Looks like we got ourselves a batch of shinies, Commander. Look around. We're one and the same. Same heart, same blood. Your training is in your blood. And my blood's boiling for a fight. So I have hope. any idea what this you've done is our war. This can't be good. We need to pull back. Get get on the ball. If we can draw them out, we can see them. If we can see them, we can hit them. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Republic Outpost Radio, brought to you by Mediabyte, and this is, of course, our weekly Star Wars podcast, and we're coming at you now with video here on YouTube, and if you're joining us on one of our podcast networks, well, you can go over to YouTube to see the video, or you can just keep listening on the podcast network. Either way, we appreciate you guys listening to the podcast this week. As always, I'm joined by my fellow co-host, Nathan Hicks. How you doing, Nate? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to talk some Star Wars. Uh, happy Friday to you. Yesterday was 4th of July. Hope you had a good barbecue or whatever. To those of you in the States, happy late 4th of July. To, use, to you guys outside of the States, happy 4th of July, I guess, just with less significance. Um, so... Let's talk Star Wars. This week we wanted to dive into something a little bit different than what we've been covering. And I usually say that every week because we've been trying to bounce around to different topics. But something that I wanted to really touch on this week is sort of the future of Star Wars outside of Episode 9. And that, of course, comes from the Disney Plus series as well as the rest of the content that we'll be receiving on Disney Plus. So quick breakdown before we kind of get into the meat of the episode. Um... Let's just explain a little bit about what Disney Plus is and what's going on with that and Star Wars. So basically, Disney Plus is the upcoming Disney streaming service dropping this fall, mid-November, on all sorts of different platforms. You're going to have all sorts of Disney content, Marvel content, and of course, Star Wars content to go alongside of it. We have The Mandalorian, which I'm sure many Star Wars fans have heard of already. That's dropping with with the streaming service. Um, The Cassian Andor TV series has also been announced for that uh, streaming service as well. And recently, Lucasfilm and Disney announced that there will be no Star Wars films for three years after Episode 9. So that leads many fans to conclude that the content that we'll be receiving, at least in live action form, will be coming solely from the Disney Plus series over the three year gap between Episode 9 and whatever the next Star Wars film is. So basically, this week we want to just kind of talk a little bit about the upcoming Disney Plus series, what we think of those, um, what series they could be doing, and you know where the future of Star Wars lies within this television series network kind of thing. So I think the first way to really kind of just dive into it is to dive in with The Mandalorian. Um, I'm going to let Nate go first because I have a lot of in-depth thoughts. I was able to go to Star Wars Celebration and see some of that footage. Um, so I could talk a little bit more at length of that, but I wanted to get Nate's initial thoughts, um, on everything that I just kind of said. Go ahead, Nate. Yeah. So I don't know a whole lot about what's going on with the Mandalorian other than like seeing a few images here and there, and I'm kind of trying to keep it that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, from the little I've seen, it looks awesome. I mean, like some of the images and stuff, the armor looks great. Um, there's a lot of good theories out there on, that I've read up on, like what the story might possibly be. And I, mean, I think it's be great. Um, I know my wife and I are getting the Disney uh, streaming service pretty much as soon as it drops. So um, we're, we're ready for all the, the juicy stuff, but I definitely see see that Disney streaming service as being kind of the future of Star Wars for the next few years. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it's just something that is going to be kind of feeding content to Star Wars fans, not only in live action, but in animation as well. We know that The Clone Wars is returning for its final season on Disney Plus as well, so that's something to consider. Um, but we're kind of focusing on the live action content because that's obviously the thing that most Star Wars fans consume. Um, 
But no, I mean, when I got to go to Star Wars Celebration and look at the Mandalorian footage, watch that with my own eyes. I know it's leaked online. You could go watch it if you really want to, um, but it's in pretty bad quality. Um, I've talked at length about my theories for the Mandalorian, my thoughts on the Mandalorian. Um, I was very impressed. It seems like the creative teams that they're putting behind these series are very impressive. Um, I'm not too familiar with the crew behind the Cassian Andor series, but at least for the Mandalorian, uh, we've got John Favreau as executive producer. Um, we've also got Dave Filoni as executive producer. Uh, ton of directing talent: Taika Waititi, Rick Famuyiwa, um, Bryce Dallas Howard, Deborah Chow, amongst others that I'm definitely missing. I know Filoni and Favreau are also directing episodes and writing them as well. So there's a lot of content to be consumed from that Mandalorian show alone, and it's going to be high-quality content. Um, When I saw it, it definitely kind of felt like it was shot as a TV series, but that doesn't mean the production value is any less. It felt like it was Star Wars, and it felt like the environments were real. I just think that the way that they chose to shot the series feels very TV-esque. There's definitely a certain way of filming TV versus filming uh, a a cinema piece or a piece of film. Um, So I definitely got a TV vibe from the way that it was shot, but I... That's no discredit to the production value of the series uh, as well. Um, I mean, Nate, you said you don't really know a ton about uh, the Mandalorian, but would you like to comment a little bit, just based on what we know of him in Rogue One, um, what you're looking for, what you're hoping for from Cassian Andor and uh, K2SO in their series? Uh, Honestly, like, I... Man, I didn't really care for Cassian in Rogue One. Um, he's kind of an asshole, which I mean, I know he's supposed to be, but like, you know, still, like he, he's, to me, he's just like, he's not a likable character. So for him to have his own show, I'm just kind of like, eh. I mean, I'll be watching it for, for K2SO. And I mean, I'll probably watch it because it's Star Wars, but still, I mean, I would have rather have seen other other people instead of him as a TV series. So yeah, no, I mean, mean, eh, you know, no, yeah, I completely get that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit later about what series we hope to see on Disney plus, uh, throughout the next couple of years. But as for Cassian, um, we also got to see like this brief teaser for the Cassian series, um, with K2SO at star Wars celebration. Basically, it was more of like a sketch piece that was made. I don't think it'll actually ever be part of the series. Um, but I, you know, unlike you, uh, I like Cassian's character a lot. I think that there's a lot of depth there. I think that there's a lot to his character in terms of um, what he'll do for the rebel cause and where he comes from with his background being coming from separatists. And as he says in the film, he's been in this fight since he was six years old. Um, and I think that there's a lot to discuss there. Um, Recently, I did a piece just about and discussing, you know, right after Revenge of the Sith, you know, where the Separatists went, where the Republic went, you know, how the Rebel Alliance was being formed. And we know that a lot of people fell in line with the Empire, but the Separatists were kind of this off group that didn't really side with either the Empire or the Rebel Alliance. And to kind of see where Cassian's parents, his family, where he went after that journey and then leading up to his uh joining of the rebel cause should be really interesting to see obviously we can't go in his life past rogue one but i think that there's a lot of interesting backstory there especially with how he met k2so um and have it almost like a solo situation where you get to or the origin of cassian and his sort of like partner in crime um k2so so that's definitely something to look forward to something that I'm hoping to see and looking forward to seeing on Disney Plus uh, sometime next year. Um, But obviously, the main excitement right now is for The Mandalorian, but that remains to be seen until November. Um, So I guess then, if we don't have any more comments on the confirmed shows, um, we should probably jump into the rumored shows, and then we can kind of talk about the ones that we really hope to see. Um, so this came out a really long time ago, uh, something passed in like February, um, where there were some huge rumors that dropped all in one day about like six or seven characters that Disney was considering for a Disney plus series. I'm going to list them off really quickly and we can kind of talk about, 
um, what ones intrigue us, which ones we really want to see. Um, so we have a Lando Calrissian series, uh, obviously starring Donald Glover, a Kira series uh, starring, um, wow, I'm blanking on her name, Amelia Clark, um, a Captain Phasma series, a series on the Knights of Ren, um, a series about a young Princess Leia, a series about Rose Tico from The Last Jedi, uh, and a series about Darth Bane. Um, and then, of course, a day later, it came out that they were considering an Obi-Wan series. Obviously, that's the one that everybody wants to talk about. Um, that's something we're going to save towards the end. But out of the names that I listed there, um, Nate, you know, Darth Bane, Leia, Rose Tico, Captain Phasma, Knights of Ren, Kira, Lando Calrissian. What sort of sticks out to you there? What are shows that you'd be interested in exploring? Um, and then we can kind of see maybe where each of those stories could go if they decide to develop all of them per se. I want to see, I want to see a captain, captain Phasma. Um, the most, I think, because I think it'd be really cool to have like, like a, a, um, not necessarily like a police procedural show, but like, I guess more of like a band of brothers from the empire's point of view, focusing on Phasma. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, I could care less about a show with with Rose or Kira, because honestly, like, I mean, just why? I guess. I mean, I don't know. Lando sounds like that would be really fun. I mean, you got to show the guy who's pretty much a scoundrel going around making cons, you know, heists. All that kind of thing sounds good. Knights of Ring could go in any direction. That could be pretty sick. But I mean, i i want to I want to see I want to see uh, Phasma for sure. Yeah, no, I think that Phasma has gotten a lot of really great development in her comic book and in her novel. Um, those were two really great areas where her character grew, and a lot of fans of that character really love the character because of her novel and her comic book. Obviously, the films haven't done her much justice. Um, she hasn't been that great of a character, and now we believe that she is dead after The Last Jedi, or at least it really seems that way. Um, so, no, I think that Phasma would be interesting. Um, we'd like, I'd like, I wouldn't mind seeing more of her backstory. Um, I think that Kira is an interesting case for sure, especially where we leave her in Solo. Um, I don't think that Solo 2 will ever happen, um, but I wouldn't be interested in pursuing either Lando or Kira in a series following the events of Solo, have uh, Alton Ehrenreich come back and play Han Solo in that series. I think Kira is the more interesting out of the two. Obviously, Lando is a character that we know and love, and he has a lot of story to be told. Um, but Kira, her character is new. She works with Darth Maul. She's someone who's a fighter, someone who will do whatever it takes to m remain on top. Um, it's just the character that she was born into. I think that her role in the underworld in Crimson Dawn and in the crime syndicates would be a very interesting series, um, sort of in line with Mandalorian, because it looks like Mandalorian's kind of exploring that underground, underworld tone of Star Wars. Um, I kind of agree with you on Rose Tico. Um, I don't necessarily dislike her character from The Last Jedi. I think that a series about her and her sister would be somewhat interesting, although I don't think that it would receive very good praise, or even if it's a fantastic show, um, I think her story is better suited for a book or a comic where fans of that character can really buy into that content specifically. Um, I would really like them to stay away from young Leia as well. Uh, fans have been casting Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things as young Leia for a long time, and I, while I think she's a talented actress and could definitely pull off that role, I think that it's best to just leave the character of Leia alone in live action after episode 9. Um, agree with what you said on the Knights of Ren, I think that a lot of that rides on how the characters are portrayed in episode nine and what their reception is. I think that if you were to develop a series on the Knights of Ren, it would take place prior to episode nine, developing where they were, you know, after Kylo Ren uh, recruits them and up until episode nine when they make their return. Um, we didn't really talk about Darth Bane. Um, you know, I've heard many times that people would be interested in Darth Bane 
uh, his trilogy just being straight up adapted. You know, it doesn't even have to be changed. That's how good those stories are. Um, I don't know if he's worthy of a trilogy of films. Um, maybe his series would be better suited for a television series. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not too familiar with the character as it is um, and can't really speak on that too much. Um, any points on what I just said, Nate? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not super familiar with Dark Bane, um, other than, you know, a few YouTube videos talking about who he is and what he did. Um, but I mean, the little I know, I mean, yeah, I think it could, I think it could make a great series, you know, a couple seasons, you know, do the, uh, the, the books, just adapt them. I think that could work out pretty well, even though I haven't read them yet, but they're on the list. So. Yeah, I know Alex, who was on with us last week, really likes the Darth Bane character, uh, something that he would be able to speak on more. Um, obviously, we want to talk about Obi-Wan. Uh, that's pretty much the main reason uh, we would be having a new Disney Plus series. That's the one that everyone's called for. They want a movie. They want a trilogy. They want a TV series. I think Obi-Wan, post-Episode 3, is best suited for a television series, sort of this Western-style television series of like six to eight episodes of an adventure he has on either Tatooine or if he has to leave Tatooine for a brief period of time um what that's like um you know we could just talk and talk about Obi-Wan um I think that it'd be really interesting to kind of have him be like this sort of sheriff for Tatooine and bounty hunters come to town and they're trying to destroy the moisture farms and in order to save Luke Obi-Wan has to sort of somewhat reveal himself uh to take down these bounty hunters uh, maybe even team up with Joel Edgerton's Owen Lars. I think that would be a really great combination. Uh, we all know Ewan McGregor wants to come back and do it. Uh, that would be something that I think fans and actors in Lucasfilm alike uh, would want to do. I think that Lucasfilm is also waiting for the right opportunity to bring Obi-Wan back. I think it's something that they know fans want, um, and I think it's something that they're just waiting for the right opportunity for. Nate, gush about an Obi-Wan series to me. Dude, I mean... We need we need Ewan back. We need we need Ewan McGregor to come back and be the Obi Wan that we all know and love. Because honestly, I think fans don't care what we get as long as he's doing it. Um, I I would like a, a movie or three, um, but I do think a TV series would would be a better way to go. Um, I will say, if we get an animated series, I'd be I'd feel a little robbed. But mm-hmm. definitely, I mean, we definitely need live action Obi Wan doing Obi Wan things on Tatooine and potentially elsewhere. It's, I mean, you know, ever since the rumored Obi Wan film, you know, a few years back that isn't going to pan out. It's just, it, it's all, it's all anyone's really wanted, honestly. So hopefully, we get it soon. No, yeah, I mean. I completely agree. I think that we just need Obi-Wan back. We need Ewan back. Um, his career hasn't gone anywhere. He just starred in Christopher Robin. Uh, he's got uh, Dr. Sleep coming up. He's got uh, he's going to play the villain in the Birds of Prey movie for DC. If anything, he's coming back. Um, he had Train Spotting too. I think that was last year or the year before. So like he's been really coming back. Um, even... Was it Fargo? Yeah, I think it was Fargo that he starred on. I think he played dual roles in that. So yeah, he's really coming back. Um, Not that he never really left, but he's kind of coming back into the main highlights and mainstream audiences are starting to see him again. Um, And he's not one of those actors who was trapped by their Star Wars role like I think certain other actors were. Um, So it's definitely something uh, that I think everyone wants for him to come back and for him to, you know take on that role again um do you have any plot ideas for an obi-wan series nate anything you'd really want to see out of that i know i talked about a lot um, of things but i like i like the bounty hunter idea um honestly i like i like the idea of of like him kind of facing all these dangers alone without without anyone really knowing you know whether it be like quietly defending moisture farms from the sand people or you know bounty hunters 
or, you know, Inquisitors coming to Tatooine to, you know, hunt him down. But he's, you know, off in the Tatooine wilderness doing his thing, playing like cat and mouse games, you know. I think, you know, just along those lines. I mean, I honestly, like, uh, I don't think we need a huge overarching plot. Um, an episode by episode basis could work potentially. Um, I mean, then again, though, I mean, when you do that, it's just a matter of how much can you fit in in a season and it still feel like, oh, well, you know, every other day he's got something new on his plate, which, which would feel a little weird to me. But, you know, I think, I think, you know, something could be worked out. It could be written, you know. I'm not a good writer, so I'm not going to write it, but someone out there can probably write it. What so. do you think about the idea of him kind of, instead of being the sheriff and kind of keeping it on Tatooine, but really diving more into the Force and about his connections to Yoda, his connections to Qui-Gon, his ability to learn the ways of becoming a Force ghost, um, you know, him kind of reflecting on the past. We've seen in different types of material um, from him, uh, that we've seen he's like discussed things like you know his history with Asajj Ventress his history with Maul kind of sort of kept this journal of his history uh, that in some versions of canon Luke has read and other versions like Legends he hasn't that's kind of uh, up in the air for me I don't really know where that stands in canon I know that Luke has come across some of Obi-Wan's journal in canon before I don't know how much Obi-Wan has officially written in that um, but what about you know, diving into the force more in depth through this series. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think no matter what we get, be it a series or a movie that, that is going to be a big part of Obi-Wan's personal character arc will be, um, you know, diving into the force and, and maybe communicating with Yoda and Qui-Gon learning to, you know, the force ghost thing. You know, I think that's going to be a big part of who he is as a character with whatever we get and, and we're, we're definitely going to see, you know, the meditations, we're definitely going to see some lightsaber form training, you know, just keeping his skills sharp. And I think that'll be a big part of it, especially early on. And then, you know, when things ramp up, we'll probably see less of it, but I think we're definitely going to get a lot of just him in the force and uh, seeing what, what he's going to do with it. So, if we were to get an Obi-Wan series, how would you want it to be done? Would you want, like, 22 episodes, like The Flash, 13, 10 to 13 episodes, like Daredevil and the Marvel Netflix, or would you rather it be, like, a short miniseries, like, 6 to 8 episodes? Um, I'm torn. Part of me wants to say, like, 10 to 13 episodes, all about an hour long, mm-hmm. but you also can't really go wrong with like the Sherlock style, like three hour and 20 minute episodes. Um, I, you know, that could potentially work. I mean, it's almost like three, three movies, but you know, space them out over a period of like, you know, three, four weeks, you know, every other week or something, drop, drop a new one. Um, I think that could potentially work. I mean, it's going to be on a streaming service most likely. So that that's not a bad idea, but if, if they don't go that route, cause you know, honestly, I think only the UK has really done any, any shows with, with that kind of style. But I think, I think we should get 10 to 13 episodes. Definitely. Um, about an hour long. I think that'll work best. Cause, cause if we, if you give us like a, a like a mini, like a mini series, six episodes, even if they're like an hour long, it's not going to be enough. Um, there's not, there's only so much story you can tell in that amount of time, which I mean, I guess you could argue that, that there's not a whole lot of story that needs to be told there, but I just feel like that's, that's not good enough. So my opinion, I'd say 10 to 13 episodes or three to four like hour, 15 hour, 20 minute episodes, like just real long. Well, an hour 20 stuff, like three to four hour and 20 minute episodes would roughly equate to like six to eight hour long episodes, wouldn't it? I don't know, man. I don't math. Okay, fair (laughs) enough. Um, I just know like, yeah, 
like watching Sherlock, you know, Sherlock, you can tell the whole story in that amount of time. And, you know, you, you give like four really long episodes for just very specific stories. I mean, I guess it just depends on the writing too. Like what kind of story is going to be told. So, I mean, I like the idea of kind of like a, a, a serialized, like, you know, this week on Tatooine with Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, here, here's, here's, the zany adventures that he got into, you know, but I think if you want like a bigger, deeper story, you know, definitely go with like the, the, the longer, the longer, uh, shows. Yeah, no, I'm kind of in that six to eight episode range. Personally, I think that there's not a ton of story to tell with Obi-Wan. Um, I think fans are really just looking for like a nice, concise story to kind of, bridge the gap in some ways uh, between episode three and four, kind of get his reflections on his failures as a master, uh, sort of how he moves on from that and shifts his focus to training Luke. Um, And I think that six to eight hour long episodes would really cover that well. Um, But of course it's all subjective. And I think that 10 to 13 would be great too. I think 22 half hour episodes or whatever would be a little too much. Um, But I do think that, Sherlock style of like three to four hour and 20 minute episodes is a little too little too concise for what the type of story that they want to tell with Obi-Wan and what the type of story is that fans want to see with Obi-Wan um any final thoughts on Obi-Wan before we move on um no I mean we need we need you and McGregor back that's about it that's true if they do it without you and McGregor it's just not it's just not worth it no, there's going to be riots. Yeah. Um, so, I'm going to have you put on your thinking cap, Nate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, out of everything that we haven't talked about yet, what types of stories would you like to see on a Disney Plus series? Hmm. I can go first if you'd like. Um, I would like to see... I would like to see um, a, group, a group of bounty hunters... On a ship, you know, something kind of like Firefly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just, you know, not not anyone we really already know. You know, there can be some some outside characters that come in here or there. But, you know, I want like four or five people on a ship. And then, you know, every episode they've got something else going on, you know, in their tussles with, you know, other smugglers or, you know, the Empire or whatever you know the huts even you know i that's that's kind of what i would like to see every you know every week something new something they hadn't encountered you know a heist or whatever or they're getting chased down by you know the law i think uh i think that would be a a really good place to start so kind of like this serial um bounty hunter series essentially yeah, like a lot of the sci-fi shows that we've gotten in the past where, you know, a group of people on a ship getting into stuff every week. Something like that, I think, would work out really well. Um, uh, other than that, uh, it'd be cool to see, you know, Old Republic era, maybe just straight up like Jedi and Jedi only. Mm-hmm. You know, just walking through some like training a la Harry Potter you know, as a TV show, uh, that could be interesting it, or it could be pretty boring. There's no telling, but I think that could be done pretty well too. So those are kind of my two thoughts on what I'd like to see. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing something kind of revolving the pilots. Um, I'm not a big fan of like pilots and stuff. I know that that's like a big area of star Wars that a lot of fans are, you know, are like obsessed with. Uh, between like the X-Wing books and the new Alphabet Squadron book. I know that there's a lot of people who really love their pilots and the pilot stories of Star Wars. Um, To me, those have always felt a little too real, a little too grounded for this sort of fantasy world. Um, But I understand why people, you know, those appeal to people and why people like to read those and check those things out. I think that having a series, kind of like what you said, but with pilots, either for the Rebellion or if you want to switch it up, do it for the Empire... Um, would be something really interesting. I think it's hard to do that with the clones. Uh, we've seen a lot of the clones and their brotherhood and the Clone Wars. I think that exploring 
sort of a squadron in the rebellion uh, or the empire or I mean you could do the resistance in the first order but it feels like that type of story would really be best served for the rebellion and the empire um, you can kind of look at it uh, post return of the Jedi um, kind of set it there figure out the another group that's going after imperial remnants um i know that i'm basically just describing alphabet squadron that just came out um i think that the concept of what they were doing with that book is slightly different than what i have in mind um but i would like to see sort of this like brotherhood of uh pilots um girls included too i just say brotherhood um where you have these rebellion pilots sort of taking these risky missions or whatever i mean hell give me a uh, black squadron uh series with poe dameron and his team i'm cool yep. with that too um something like that in the resistance era um prior to the force awakens is they're sort of investigating first order activity for the new republic for the resistance uh you know sort of mysterious kind of give yourself an origin story a little bit for poe dameron uh, we know a little bit about his history uh who his parents were and his sort of rise in the resistance um, but it'd be interesting to kind of see the Black Squadron as a whole. Um, and those, other than Oscar Isaac, you're not looking at a lot of mainstream actors. Um, you have Greg Gumberg, and um, I can't think of her name, but she's also on Iron Fist. Uh, her name starts, it hurts Jessica something. Um, but she's also on Iron Fist and stuff. So there's definitely a cast there already, uh, a talented one at that. Um, but I'm also super on board with your like Firefly, Bounty Hunters kind of idea. Um, anything kind of outside the box, you know, we, a lot of what we go to with these types of series is like the underworld stuff, the pilots, um, the Jedi, um, are there any characters in star Wars currently that you would be interested in, you know, seeing a series about, uh, that haven't been discussed? I think that there's a lot of really interesting characters that could be handled well. Um, you have to kind of pick your poison though, because a lot of characters, either the actors are too old or have since passed, um, or, you know, you have CGI restraints and that kind of thing. But, um, I think a general Grievous show would be cool. Something like that. Um, that's still completely doable. I mean, hell, even a Darth Maul series is still doable. Um, you're running out of material and time to cover his story. But if you want to do something with him and Kira, uh, post solo, that's the timeline to do it. You have that time between the end of solo and when he shows back up in rebels, uh, to cover as well. Um, any characters though, Nate, that you think could, you know, yes, handle their I mean, own Disney Plus series? You you mentioned pilots, and and I didn't think of that. Now I'm kind of kicking myself. I would like to see, oh, a Legend Tilly's Rogue Squadron, you know, show set either during you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back all the way through. Return of the Jedi is like a parallel to those movies or even directly after Return of the Jedi mopping up remnants of the Empire. But I think, you know, a Rogue Squadron show, um, you could probably set it up similar to like Battlestar Galactica, you know, just kind of like a military type thing. And they go out and do their dogfights and save, you know, the fleet as they're hunting down, doing their thing. Uh, I think that would be really cool. And Wedge, you know, didn't get enough screen time, in my opinion. And all his stories are no longer canon. So I would definitely like to see him come back strong in a, in a new canon format. So so would you recast Wedge, obviously? Yes, you'd have to recast Wedge. But, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's plenty of people out there that could probably do it. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult, especially because he gets so little screen time in general. He act, and, there's uh, actually two wedges in a New Hope. Um, there's two different actors. Yeah, certain material that play wedge, which is actually pretty interesting. Um, another question, because we still have a lot of time. Um, actors who you would want in Star Wars that you think would be really well fitted for TV and Disney series. It doesn't matter what series, doesn't matter where they fit. Um, but like Pedro Pascal, for example. Uh, Carl yeah. Weathers, for example, people that they're casting in The Mandalorian are people that, you know, would be great in Star Wars and are going to be great in Star Wars. Um, but actors that are sort of on your radar that you think would be really cool. And if you have a, sort of this fan cast for them, by all means, uh, go ahead. Oh, that's a tough one for me because I don't I mean, I watch shows, but I don't 
I usually only watch shows on streaming services, but, you know, uh, David Borneos, you know, from Angel and Bones, and yeah, he's now got cool. that SEAL team. I think he would uh, make a really good, like, scoundrel type character maybe like a captain of a ship a group of smugglers you know i don't think of him he'd he'd, he'd actually probably be a good fit for star wars yeah um you know i don't really keep up with a lot of tv actors either i mean there's there's um crud now i'm brain farting i'm trying to think of what i've been watching lately but i've just been watching old shows I'll throw out one because I just saw Spider-Man Far From Home. I think Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal should join Star Wars. However, you think so? I mean, seeing um, his sort of reaction coming out of the MCU, I don't know if that's the best choice for him. Um, since it was very apparent in the Spider-Man Far From Home marketing that he kind of signed on for the character, liked the character and his writing, um, which I did too but ultimately wasn't that invested in the overall cinematic universe of Marvel. Um, it was very apparent in a couple of interviews that it seems like he probably hasn't even seen another MCU movie other than Far From Home, which I think is interesting. Um, he also did some other side segments and stuff that I saw that he didn't look all that invested in. Um, so I think this was something that he probably wants to stick to the indie genre anyway, uh, but he's a really talented actor. Um, I think you could put him in almost anywhere and he'll fit well. Um, just somebody I wanted to throw out there. Um, not to dig on your Firefly reference even more. I don't know if he'd be too goofy. Nathan Fillion probably would fit in Star Wars well somewhere, even if it was just for a cameo. Um, I don't know if I would have him lead his own Star Wars show. Um, even though he could, he's talented like that. Um, I just think he's almost too recognizable of a face, which is something that Star Wars doesn't typically go for um, right. when you overall look at Star Wars and how they cast. Um, so I'm trying not to pick anybody who's super recognizable like to like a giant public eye. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nathan Fillion at one point or another does a cameo, especially with Alan Tudyk involved now. Um, I mean, you could see John Favreau do something. Live yeah. action. I think that'd be kind of cool. I'm sure he's camo, uh, cameoing in The Mandalorian at some point or another. Most people do. Um, but I think that he'd be kind of a cool one to kind of just get in and out for like a quick cameo. Almost like an Unkar Plutt situation with Simon Pegg. Um, yeah. I think that'd be something fun for fans of the series to look at. Um, trying to think of other actors. I mean, there's obviously a bunch of like wish list characters or actors that you would like love to see in Star Wars that'll never happen. Um what if we had like some sort of like zany like buddy comedy with with actually Simon Pegg and Nick Frost just set in the Star Wars universe. Like like just grab Edgar Wright, grab Simon Pegg and Nick Frost and be like, "Okay, do something Star Wars and just like see what happens." I don't know. I know Simon Pegg's a big fan of the franchise. Um, I feel like that's a little too out of left field for Star Wars. Um, It's not, you know, it's not completely out of the realm of possibility, but I don't think that's where they want to go. It's not sure where. Personally, I'm not sure that's where I would want Star Wars to go. Um, Well, I mean, now's the time to experiment. The universe is huge. Oh, I mean, definitely. But, like, there's also a certain thing about keeping a certain genre in Star Wars and keeping a certain tone. Um, that I think is really important. Um, but uh, not opposed to Simon Pegg coming back and doing something else. I just don't know if Edgar Wright in that kind of style of humor would fit super well in Star Wars. Um, but yeah, that's imagine, just definitely Could you imagine, to like, if not Edgar Wright, like, just like a Guy Ritchie Star Wars film, too? Oh, like... Jesus. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will take and i love the last jedi and i know people don't but like i would take a ryan johnson film any day over a guy ritchie film um, oh see i love guy ritchie films but i don't think i would like him doing a star wars oh no i definitely wouldn't um i think also just one last name to throw out there ray fisher who plays cyborg um in justice yep. league uh really talented guy hasn't really broken out yet i would say i think cyborg was an eye opener for some people, but obviously that role is like mostly CGI and didn't really give him a big opportunity to kind of showcase himself on the big screen. 
Um, I think he'd be a good fit, almost like a John Boyega, immensely talented, sort of not really hidden, but not well known. Um, and to kind of come out and sort of wow us um, in a Star Wars role, I think would be very cool. Um, we're coming up sort of towards the end, but we got time to still talk. Mm-hmm. Um, what we could g- dive into next is more of Disney Plus as a platform. Um, and less of like what kind of content is going to be on there. Um, so like, do you think that this content that we're getting, let's assume right now that we get after the Mandalorian, we get two Disney shows a year from star Wars. So we'll get like Cassian sometime mid next year in like May, we'll say. Right. And then we get Mandalorian season two or like another series in the fall of 2020 so you kind of split them up that way yeah and you do that for three years is that enough content to hold star wars fans over in the live action genre obviously there's a ton of other content but like for fans who are missing the films on the big screen and they're pushing for more live action star wars content and they need to consume that two shows a year they don't drop all at once like netflix they stream week by week is that enough content I two shows no I'd say three shows three shows could make enough content I think I would say do two long running shows and then do one like 10 to 13 episode like heavy drama like just boom you know we drop the season of this awesome show and that's that's gonna be it for that like right in the middle of that three year mark and I think uh I think that'll that'll definitely carry carry it over because then because then once that drops you're looking at a season three for the other two shows roughly to carry you through the third year. I think I think that would that would actually work out really well. Well, then it also depends on if you're breaking content down. You know, how many seasons would the Mandalorian run? How many seasons would a Cassian show run? I feel like the Cassian thing is kind of like a one-off thing. Whereas right. the Mandalorian could run on for two or three seasons. Um, mm-hmm. And that might work too, where they like release Mandalorian season one. Next year, they release a new show with Cassian and Mandalorian season two. The year after that, a new show at Mandalorian season three, that kind of thing. Um, it's definitely a possibility. I think that the content will hold people over. Um, I think it'll also inspire people to kind of go check out other types of Star Wars content which is cool video games, comics, books, animated shows, that kind of thing. Um, We've been very spoiled since Disney acquired Lucasfilm. We've been getting films every year. We've been getting celebrations. We've been getting, you know, now we're getting TV content. We've been getting animated content. Um, They've they've given us a lot of content since they acquired Lucasfilm. And it's it used to be you had to wait three years for a Star Wars film. And then in between trilogies, you were waiting like 20 years between... uh, each trilogy so ultimately we're kind of spoiled right now and obviously waiting three years is not the end of the world Uh, but with the way that movies go today where you've got things like the mcu where you've got a new film coming out every year or in the dcu where you've got you know a film every year every other year um fans have kind of started to expect that pop culture content at a faster rate um and since star wars isn't trying to go into that direction of two three films a year uh, instead kind of want to space out their content maybe the future of star wars is on tv um it's something they've wanted to do something george lucas has wanted to do for a long time if the fans like it then it's the future of star wars unfortunately um maybe not unfortunately either um it's just something depending on the reception and what you as a fan feel about the star wars live action tv content um i guess we'll go one or two last questions um something i wanted to bring up also was um do you think that they'll ever make a star wars live action film that debuts on disney plus oh yeah yeah i mean disney like for me growing up like disney original movies were like a huge thing so i definitely could see could see movies especially especially geared towards you know 
kids and maybe like preteens, I could definitely see Star Wars content that's not animated geared for that age group in a movie form. Easy. What about a PG-13 movie? I don't know. Maybe. I think it's unlikely, but maybe. I'm just looking at it from like a perspective of not within the next three years, obviously, but, right. you know, those films that might not make it to the big screen. I don't know. The Obi-Wan film, if they want to do a film, if they want to do a Boba Fett film, if they want to do these sort of stories, if they want to do a solo two. These are things that, that you could release on a streaming service instead of in theaters. It feels weird to watch a Star Wars film not in theaters, obviously. Um, I don't know how much I'd like that, but I think it's definitely possible. I think it's something that Lucasfilm is probably considering heavily, especially since there's so many stories that they want to tell in a new era of Star Wars, as well as go back and kind of tell stories about characters in the Star Wars uh, saga that we're familiar with now. Um, it's I think it's the perfect place for a Solo 2 to happen, whether that be in a TV form or a film form. Um, I think Disney Plus is the perfect place to continue that story. It's a story that fans want, um, despite the way that Solo was you know, criticized and whatnot. Um, I think ultimately, as fans go back and look at Solo, they're going to realize what the potential was and how much they enjoyed Solo back in the day. Um, I really still enjoy Solo. I think it's a really great Star Wars film, and when you enjoy it for what it is, it's it can be almost top-tier Star Wars if you really like it. Um, plus, that Darth Maul twist gets me every time. Um, any other thoughts, Nate? Yeah, I got, I got a little bit of a question for you, and this is something that I had brought up to you a while back. Um, so we we talk we talked a lot tonight about Disney Plus, you know, uh, being the future of Star Wars. But do you think that there's any other mediums that we'll see Star Wars content on that we haven't yet? Oh, I mean, what has Star Wars covered? I mean, I mean you got we've... books, comics, shows, animated. Oh, yeah, I mean, we've got video games, audio books yeah. exclusive. Like, they just released an audio exclusive book that they did hint was coming to hardcover uh, eventually. But something that's like an audio exclusive. I mean, hell, they've got Star Wars original content on YouTube now with yep. the Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures shorts and the Star Wars Forces of Destiny. Um, I don't know if there's anything left to cover. I mean, I got I got two ideas. Okay. I would like to see it, like a, a, a Japanese anime like that like okay. legit like higher on an anime studio out of like Japan like Funimation or not yeah is it Funimation yeah something like that and just like give them like a general story and be like yo like drop a dope ass anime I think would be interesting I, I would like to see that art style put in Star Wars just just for shits and giggles did you have another one Yes. So, so I mean, it's kind of similar to, to, you know, dropping the, the audio book that's not even out like hard, hard copy yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I think Marvel does this, but almost like a, like an old radio serial in well, podcast, cool. like a podcast, you know, like with voice like actors it, and stuff with voice actors. So every two weeks you get like a 20, 30 minute episode that's all just uh, people talking set in the Star Wars universe, maybe a couple sound effects here or there. Uh, just do something like, like, like a, like a political thriller or something with like empire politics or, you know, something like that I think would, would work, work really well. And like, a, a you know, you just download it on your podcast app and, you know, I catch really the new episodes when they come out. I'm not a big anime fan. So like, I'm not super keen on Star Wars anime. I think that anime is a cool style. I appreciate the Star Wars fan-made anime that's come out. I think that it's really well done. It could be really well done. I'll still watch it if it comes out. Um, it's not something I'm really begging for. It, I'm not sure it's something that Star Wars fans as a whole are really begging for. I like your podcast serial idea. 
Um, I think the issue that comes with that is just finding listeners and making sure that people are really listening to that, um, maintaining a stable audience. I mean, it's Star Wars that attracts people to it regardless, um, yeah. but still something to consider. And a medium that I that they've now touched on um, very recently, but something that as it expands, I would like to see more Star Wars content being told through that is definitely VR stories. Um, they did Vader Immortal. That's still going. Uh, they did Secrets of the Empire. That's like something you can go visit um, and do it like a special VR place. Um, but those have had lore hints. Those have had real story beats that are canon. Um once VR becomes more accessible to the average homeowner, um, VR is something where you can really live in Star Wars um, and you could really live these stories. And I think it's something that could be a really great future for Star Wars. Um, we've had other Star Wars experiences, um, including uh, there was a Battlefront Star Wars little VR thing that came out back when Rogue One was uh, coming out in theaters. Um and we've even dating back to like the Xbox Connect, we've had Star Wars video games where like you use motion sensors and can use the force and all that good stuff. Um, so VR video game stuff in that format where you're telling a story and you're living the Star Wars story, I think is something that is a great place for fans to go. But you need that VR technology to be a little more readily available before you're able to do something like that. Yeah, I agree. The only other thing I can think of is plugging my idea for another Star Wars MMO. You know, bring it on. Bring back Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, that's a good one. So, um, but that's all I got. Yeah, so I think we're kind of done. I mean, Disney Plus is something that we've wanted to talk about. Um, unfortunately, without knowing a lot of information about it still, it's hard to say anything in depth about where we wanted to go obviously though the 699 price point super helpful um really enticing and if they can keep that price point for the next like three or four years that'd be glorious um and they can because they're disney and they can afford that um so definitely another reason to be on the disney plus train be excited for disney plus um, and the Star Wars content that's coming. On top of the fact that if you're a Marvel fan, there's a ton of cool Marvel content. If you're just a Disney fan, they have so much Disney content that's going to be on there. So this isn't an ad for Disney Plus or anything like that, but it's just something that we're excited about. We're excited about what the Star Wars stories are that are going to be told on Disney Plus. Um, so we figured we would talk a little bit about that on this episode of the podcast. So. That will do it for this week's episode. Uh, if you're joining us on the YouTube version, again, thank you for checking out our new video format. Let us know in the comments uh, what you think of it or leave a like if you liked the video format. It's something we're going to be sticking with regardless, uh, but we're still looking for feedback on the design, on the execution, if it looks okay. Um, hopefully it still looks okay. Um, We'll see after the edit how it looks. Um, if you're listening to us on any of our podcast networks and you're just listening to us, do us a favor. Go check out the live action podcast every now and again. Maybe leave us a like. Um, if not, hey, just subscribe. Uh, rate us on the podcast network that you're on. We really appreciate that kind of stuff. It really helps us out. Um, and support the media by in our other podcasts. So we have the A, B, and C show. That just came out uh, with an episode last Wednesday. Uh, they've been going strong. They're almost on their 20th episode. Uh, just your standard run-of-the-mill comic book news web um, podcast with, you know, different discussions. We just did our Spider-Man Far From Home review on that. And we debuted our new podcast this week as well, Comics and Coffee, which is our comic book-based podcast. If, you in, if you're into comic books and you like to read weekly comic books, that's the podcast for you. Our hosts, Alex and Evan, really break down everything there is to know about comic books and their opinions on the ones that you're reading every week. Um, make sure to check that out as well. That'll be in the same podcast feed, same YouTube feed, all that stuff. So I think that's everything. Uh, I'll plug the Media Bytes information before we head over back to Nate. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Media Bite. Make sure to check out our Media Bite website. Uh, I post weekly Star Wars editorials. We post daily uh, editorials every weekday as well as news pieces. Make sure to follow us on social media to keep up with all the latest pop culture news, including Star Wars stuff. Although, to be honest, we've been pretty sparse on Star Wars news the past couple months. Um, 
I don't know when the next Star Wars Rise of Skywalker trailer is coming. Probably not till August. But in the meantime, keep up with us on this podcast as we're talking Star Wars. Nate, my good friend, after all that talking, where can the good people find you online? At Twitter, at Drunken Dragon. Um, again, there's there's numbers in there. <laughs> don't I'll remember where. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Twitter. Um that's about it. I don't really post on Instagram. So, yeah. And you guys can find me on Twitter as well at real Sean Hussey. And I'm going to soft plug myself because I can. Um, if you like the designs that you're seeing here on the media by podcast network and on the other shows, the A, B and C show, um, comics and coffee will have one when they air on Monday. Um, if you like those designs, hit me up. Um, I designed these a hundred percent from scratch. Um, using Adobe After Effects, Photoshop, Illustrator, all that good jazz. So if you like this kind of content, if you're looking for new logos, new backdrops for your podcast or website, check me out. My rates are pretty low. Uh, I would appreciate the business. Quick plug. Um, So again, that will do it for us this week. Join us next week as we talk some more Star Wars. And as always, may the force be with you.